<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can modify your Super Nintendo Classic or your Super Famicom Classic using Hack G2. Now, if you've seen my guide before on how to modify your Famicom Classic or your Nintendo Classic, it's going to be the same thing really, uh, except there's going to be a few little changes and we're going to be using a more updated version of the program. Uh, but if you've modified a Nintendo Classic before, you're going to be very familiar with this process. But for anybody who's never done this, this should be easy enough. What you're going to need is first off, of course, you will need your Super Nintendo Classic. I'm using a Super Nintendo here. If you're using a Super Famicom, follow along with your system. And you're also going to need to hook it up to your computer and download this program called Hack G2. This is what we're going to use to actually modify the system. When you come to the page that is down below in the description, you want to go down and find the latest install and just grab this version. You're going to see a few options here. You can grab the web installer if you want to, but honestly, you can just grab the zip file right here, the first one, and that should be fine. Just download the latest version. Once it has been downloaded, you're going to right click, extract it because it's a zip file and wait a few seconds. Once it finishes extracting, just double click on the HackG2 folder, double click this HackG exe file, and it's going to ask what system you have. So pick which one you have. If you have a Super Nintendo, then you can pick this, but obviously if you have a Super Famicom, pick that. Since I'm using a Super Nintendo, I'm going to click on Super Nintendo. And it will now tell us how to easily use it, and if you want to, you can just follow these instructions, or you can continue watching the video to see how to add your games and such and modify it. So what you can do after you hit OK here is this is what it's going to look like. There's nothing really on here. It just says original games and that's about it, assuming that you have a Super Nintendo hooked up. What we want to do first, very important step, we want to back up our kernel. This is the very first thing you should be doing. So what you need to do is come up here to kernel, go to dump kernel, and it will ask, do you want to dump the kernel? Say yes. And it's going to give you these instructions right here, which essentially this is going to say you can follow along right here. But what I'm doing is right now the Super Nintendo is off. So I'm going to hold the reset button up, turn on the Super Nintendo. And after about three or four seconds, it should connect to my computer. And that's it. As you can see at that point, when this window changes, you can release the reset button, keep your system on and wait a few minutes because we need to dump our kernel. Once your kernel has been dumped, it's going to say right here, your original kernel is saved in the hack G2 dump folder. Do not lose it. And this is what I'd recommend. Go ahead, hit OK, go to your hack G folder, go to where it says dump and you're going to see kernel SNES IMG. You're just going to copy this and I'm going to say, you shouldn't do it like this, but let's just say for our sake here, we're going to make a backup folder. So make a backup folder somewhere, preferably on Dropbox or some other drive that you have that's going to be safe. And immediately just make a backup of this and copy it into the backup folder. Make sure you remember where that is. Now that we have our kernel safe and secure, let's go ahead X out of that and come back over to HackG. The first thing we're going to do here is go back over to kernel and say flash custom kernel. It's going to ask us, do we want to flash the custom kernel? Say yes. What this is going to do is this is now going to install the HackG kernel itself on here. So it's going to dump our kernel again, verify it, and then modify the system itself. And that's complete. At this point, it should say you can now upload games to your system. So hit OK right there, and we are good to go at that point. Now, before we start adding a bunch of games, you've probably been playing the system and you might have some save states on there. One cool thing I do want to show you is if you go over to Tools and Save State Manager, you can wait a few seconds right here and you're going to have your save states. What I would recommend doing before you make any further changes is to take your current save states and export them. All you need to do for that is select one of them, say export selected, and then you can save it wherever you want to. For example, I'm just going to save it in my Super Nintendo folder right here. If you ever want to import it back in, all you have to do is click import, again, grab the earthbound file or whatever file that you have saved, double click that and it will upload it onto your system. At that point, that is how you can back up your save states, which will be important if you mess around with them at all or in case they get lost. So now, assuming you've probably done your backup here, you have your system modified, you probably want to add games at this point, I don't blame you. So here, we're going to need a few games. Now, I cannot help you source these games, but you're going to need a few games to add on here. So I've already grabbed a folder. I have a few games of mine that I want to add. And all you really need to do is grab the games you want, drag and drop them right here. If you can't drag and drop them properly, you might have opened this as administrator. You don't have to have administrator on here, but we can go ahead X out of this. And then we're going to want some cover art for these games. So you just want to highlight all the games right here. 
right click and say download box art for selected games and wait a few seconds. Now it should say done and we can individually click these games right here. As you can see, it populates in the metadata. It automatically compresses them as well too, which is good because that means that you're just going to get more space on your system for more games and everything is looking fine on all of these. There's nothing that I really need to change here. Now, as for anything else, if you ever want to come up to kernel and uninstall Hackchi from your system, you're more than welcome to do that. If you ever want to flash over your original kernel, make sure you still have that on hand and you'll be okay. For any extra modules, this is something that you're going to have to be a bit careful with. If you go to install extra modules right here, um, there's a few that you can play around with. So your custom filters, that's a good read if you want to check that out. You can remove thumbnails, you can add a password, you can do the music hack where you can just completely disable music, or you can add your own music in there, or extra space right here. This one is interesting. Now I'm not going to use it on here, but I am going to tell you all about it. If you end up checking this and hit OK, and then sync up your your system, you end up adding about, as it says here, an extra 50 megabytes. But at this time, what it does is it takes your save states and it moves them to a different place on the storage. So that's why I recommended backing them up. I've messed around with this a few times. I've added the extra space. I've removed it. I've done a few things and I have wiped my save states a few times. So if you're going to use that extra space hack, just be careful. That's why I advise you to back up your save states and just know what you're doing. But I'm going to exit out of this and we can keep that in mind. If you want to go over to your settings right here, you can change your console type if you decide to switch things around. Maybe you have a Famicom that you might want to do this on. Uh, any of your pages and folder structure. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select automatic. And that's what I'm going to pick because I'm only adding a few games. So it's going to just bundle them in with the original 21 that are on the system. But you have a lot of other options here as well too. One thing that I have done before is I've done folders split by first letter. And you can also say uh, the recommended amount of games that you want on here. And just be careful of how many you're going to be adding and all that. Things get a little bit unstable if you go too crazy on here. But just be careful. As for controller hacks, this is also something I'd recommend adding on. Use this uh, select reset button combination. Now this is really cool. If you look at this, if you press down and select at the same time on a controller, it will restart your system so you don't have to physically reset the system while you're playing a game. I'd highly recommend keeping that in line right there. You can also do this use select plus AB to enable auto fire. So there we go, hold select AB for a second to enable or disable auto fire on either of those. So we now have that set up on there. Uh, compressed games, we already want that. Extended font, that's fine. And at that point, we're really good to go. There's nothing else that I'm wanting on here. So now that we have our settings just the way we want them, we have our games right here, we have all of our nice box art, and we have everything set up. All you need to do at this point is hit synchronize selected games with Nintendo or Super Nintendo Mini and wait a few seconds for everything to transfer over. Now at this point, as you can see, it says done and we can now go over to our Super Nintendo Mini. So I'm going to show you my console on screen here. All right, so I'm back over at our console right here. These are the original games, some of them. And as you can see, Yeez 3 is now on there. It blends in with the rest of the games. And let's look for something else that I've added on here. For example, SimCity, here we go, Sim Earth. These these are the new games I have on here. So as you can see, let's pick SimCity here for example. I can press A on this and it's just going to launch like a regular game. You wait a few seconds, it brings all this up and we're good to go at this point. I can start a new game if I want to, everything else that works out. And now get this, if I press down and select both at the same time, sometimes you might have to do it a few times here because my timing is a little bit off, but you can end up resetting the system just like that. And when you reset it, all these suspend, suspend points, excuse me, act the same. So I can just press down, press Y. As you can see, my suspend point is right there. If I press A on here, instantly loads it up. Well, it takes like a second or two, but still loads it up fast enough. And I've reset this, but again, if we want to go back, check out any of the other games, for example, like Scooby-Doo right here, we can just press A and this game is also going to work. So there we go, that is about it. So as you can see, we now have these games added on easily enough. So hopefully you now have some new games added to your Super Nintendo Mini or Super Famicom Mini, and hopefully it was easy enough for you all. If you enjoyed this video, a like would very much be appreciated. If you absolutely hated it, a dislike is fine as well too.